so the aspect of transition I'm going to be focusing on today is the change in burial practices from mostly furnished graves to mostly unfurnished graves. And this is a process which takes place across large parts of Western Europe throughout the 7th and into the early 8th century. Though there's evidence from some areas that it's actually part of a much longer process extending back into the 6th century. So my entire study period I'm looking at the 6th to 8th centuries AD. Now this isn't exactly an understudied phenomenon. Um, and lots of different explanations have been put forward for it, ranging from Christianization to the stratification of social hierarchies. But a lot of these explanations have just looked at very small areas and haven't really considered what's going on across the continent as a whole and how different areas might have been influencing each other as part of the change. Um, today I'm going to be talking more about the processes of change rather than the actual motivations behind it, but the two are in some ways linked. Um, and I think one of the reasons that no one has really studied this transition as a whole before is because of some of these challenges of looking at change over such a broad area. So my study area includes six different modern day countries, all of which have quite different approaches to excavation, uh, to chronological analysis and to publishing. Not to mention um, the different research trajectories which have taken place in those different countries over the last 50 years or so. Another issue with looking at this sort of transition is that the type of evidence is fundamentally different on either side of it. So archaeologists tend to approach furnished burial quite differently to how they approach unfurnished burials, particularly in the, when it comes to the chronological study of them. Uh, so I'm going to talk through some of these issues by showing you my data set and showing you what I've done with it, um, and then hopefully showing you how I've got around some of these issues in the, the levels of cemetery evidence available in different parts of the <coughs> continent. So I've gathered data from <coughs> cemeteries in use between the 6th to 8th centuries uh, from six modern day countries, so the UK, specifically England, uh, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany and Switzerland. And that's given me a sample of 246 cemeteries, uh, containing in total 33,690 graves. Now that sounds like an awful lot, but it's actually a really tiny sample of what's available to me. Um, I've only included cemeteries where I had a full grave catalogue available, so a grave-by-grave -grave inventory of everything that was, uh, all the objects which were associated with those graves. Um, although I ha did have to relax that for some areas, uh, particularly this part of northern France here, where I found it quite difficult to find those full grave catalogues. Uh, most importantly, though, is that I had good chronological evidence available for the cemeteries. So ideally that would be things like absolute dating, so radiocarbon dates, dendrochronology dates, um, or coin dated graves. But those are unfortunately all too rare. So second best was some of the typological studies which have been done. Although of course that does exclude the unfurnished burials. Uh, I've also only uh, concentrated on cemeteries that contained more than 20 individuals, just to try and keep this project to something of a manageable size. So taking that data, I've created a series of kernel density maps using ArcGIS. So this is the density of cemeteries at the start of the 7th century, uh, and you, which is probably when I have the, my um, densest concentrations. And you'll see that there are some quite big geographical differences. Uh, there are some areas where there are lots of burials, so uh, East Anglia and Kent, this lower Rhine region in particular. Uh, but then there's some areas where I've really struggled to find cemeteries. So, just south of the River Seine in France, um, and that is a well documented, there's, there's a lack of set known cemeteries there. Uh, some of these clusters, however, are, are more a result of, um, of excavation and study biases rather than uh, historical realities. So, you will notice that a lot of these groupings actually correlate to where you have um, really good chronological studies which have taken place. So you've got the work of Hines and Bayless up in England. Um, this is uh, Perrin and Legou's Chronology Normalise there. Uh, the work of the Franklin Arbeitsgruppe uh, analysing the chronology of the Lower Rhine region. Uh, and then South Germany is another area where there's been a lot of really good chronological study done. So there are some questions over how much this just reflects the level of study and how much it actually reflects historical reality. The most striking differences, though, are the chronological biases that I have. 
So when you compare the cemetery density at the start of the 7th century to what I have for the end of the 8th century, that is quite a drastic difference there. Archaeologists have traditionally been less interested in those uh, usually later unfurnished cemeteries. Um, and I think the biggest problem with them is the dating of them. Uh, when you don't have the artifacts, you do have to rely on things like radiocarbon dating. Um, and there are, of course, geographical differences in how commonly radiocarbon dating is used. So you'll notice, although it's not very high, the concentration in England is higher than the rest of the continent. Um, and that's because the uh, English scholars do tend to use radiocarbon dating more, though this is starting to change and it's starting to become more common in continental practices as well. A really big problem in the literature is this assumption that unfurnished cemeteries are always later than furnished cemeteries. So quite often you will read um, cemetery excavation reports and you'll read that this cemetery dates to the 8th to 9th century, but there's no evidence to actually support that claim. Uh, so I, unfortunately I can't use those cemeteries in this sort of analysis without it leading to a circular argument. So to try and get around some of these if issues about the, the very different levels of evidence available, I've created some relative kernel density maps. So I've created density maps uh, based on the average number of objects per grave, and then shown that relative to the cemetery densities, so the maps I showed you earlier. And this somewhat accounts for sampling biases. Uh, not entirely, where you have areas where there are very few cemeteries, there are still question marks over exactly how reliable some of these averages are. But the advantage of this method is that it smooths out areas which have been subject to really intense study. So where you see high densities of grave wood use on the maps, you can be pretty confident that that's because people were richly furnishing their graves there. It's not just an area where there's a lot of well-published, well-studied cemeteries. Uh, I've also at this stage carried out a hotspot analysis. Um, so, and this has shown that the squares are statistically significant hotspots, uh, and the triangles are statistically significant cold spots. And the relative sizes of those symbols is to do with uh, confidence levels in that statistical significance. Um, but everything that's plotted is over 90% confidence. So this map here is the initial distribution at the start of the 6th century. And you can see uh, there's a fairly clear dividing line running from the coast southeast down to the Alps, south of which you have very low levels of grave good use. Um, so you've got statistically significant cold spots over Burgundy, over northern France, uh, and the grave good averages there approaching one object per grave on average, but many of them are far, far lower than that. Uh, then north of that dividing line, you have more of a band of medium use uh, with pockets of, of much higher density. So up in East Anglia, uh, in Alemannia and Bavaria. Uh, and there, some of the averages are approaching four or five objects per grave. So how does this change as we go forward in time? So for the first half of the 6th century, there's actually very little change. It's quite static. Then as you reach 550, this is where you start seeing those high concentrations in Anglo-Saxon England particularly quite decreasing. As you reach uh, the start of the 7th century, there's another period of stasis up until about 650 AD where you start seeing that decline in England beginning again. And this is all leading up to the pivotal point, I think, of 685. So I'm just going to pause the, the run through there. Um, and this is where... Uh, according to Heinz and Bayliss's chronology, 685 is the date that most of the Anglo-Saxon furnished cemeteries go out of use. I think there's evidence from some areas that a few of them continue in use slightly later than that, um, but there is a significant change. And what's interesting is on the continent, at exactly the same point, there's also much more of a, a decrease in those concentrations than you've seen previously. It's nowhere near as marked as it is in England, but it's, it's definitely something interesting going on there. And then that moment seems to accelerate the process of change. So as you get up to 730 AD, that's when most of the Alemannian cemeteries go out of use. Uh, and then by 760 AD, that pocket in the Lower Rhine, which was hanging on, has also gone. Uh, at the end of the 8th century, uh, there is very little uh, grave good use across the continent. 
There are still some statistically significant hotspots, but when you have such low grade produced everywhere, uh, even one or two objects could be causing that. Uh, I think what is interesting is the fact that all of England is showing up as a statistically significant cold spot. So that suggests that maybe the abandonment of grave goods is more complete there than it is elsewhere. So what these maps have demonstrated is change that results from cemeteries going in and out of use. But it doesn't really account for any change that might be going on from within cemeteries. So I've combined that GIS analysis with a more in-depth statistical analysis of individual cemeteries. So I don't have time to go into all of these in detail, unfortunately, but I chose them mainly because uh, there are large numbers of graves from which I can get quite precise dates from that allows me to plot change over time. Uh, so these cemeteries here um, from, from Wessex, uh, Alemannia, Francia and Bavaria all show a statistically significant decrease in their grave reduce over time. And that grave reduce appears that, so the decrease in grave reduce appears to start around the mid-6th century. Um, I don't want to be too precise about these dates uh, because the, the points that I've plotted, they're just the midpoints of ranges and all of these cemeteries have been dated by slightly different methods uh, which aren't necessarily comparable. Um, but roughly the mid-6th century is when this decline seems to start. And that is exactly when, on the, uh, uh, the broader scale, we saw those first changes appearing in the Anglo-Saxon burial record. So this isn't true of all regions that you see those changes within the cemeteries. So these ones from East Anglia, Castledyke South, uh, sorry, East Anglia, Northumbria, Kent and Burgundy, um, none of those show a statistically significant decrease over time. And I know it looks like there's a very nice dip at the end of Castle Lake South's use, uh, but actually those last two phases only have one grave each dated to them. So that's, that does not come out as statistically significant at all. What I find particularly interesting here um, is that of the four Anglo-Saxon cemeteries that I've analysed in this way, uh, three of them uh, show change over time. Of the ones from the continent that I've analysed, there's only one that doesn't show change over time, and that's from Burgundy, which is one of the regions with the lowest grave reduced to start off with, so there's very little room for it to decrease significantly further. So this suggests to me that the, the change uh, on the continent is occurring primarily within the cemeteries, whereas the change in England, there's, there's much more of a rapid turnover of cemetery use. So Cemeteries are abandoned and reformed uh, more rapidly, so there's very little chance to see that change over time within the cemeteries, and it's only really visible at the larger scale. Let's try and bring everything together now. Um, so at the start of the 6th century, you have quite different types of practice scattered across the continent. Um, so South Germany and Anglo-Saxon England initially pe appear quite similar with their high levels of grave reduce and then they're separated by this band of slightly lower grave reduce in Francia. Um, but those two areas which appear quite similar to start off with change over time in quite a different way. Um, so the, the Frankish and the Alemannian cemeteries, the continental ones, appear to be a bit more rooted. They're places that people return to time after time to continually bury their dead, even with the, 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 the way in which you bury your dead, even when that is changing. Uh, the Anglo-Saxon ones are less rooted in the landscape, it seems to me. They are abandoned, reformed more quickly. Um, and when people start burying their dead differently, they possibly move to a new cemetery to do so. So this has been uh, a quite a, a brief overview of, of my work. Um, I've also done a, a, um, a mid-range analysis of looking at individual regions in more detail. Um, there are smaller regional differences within England, uh, within those very broad areas of the continent, particularly in the ways that different types of grave goods are used. And I haven't really had a chance to discuss those there here. Um, but hopefully this has given you a broad overview of the way different parts of the continent might be relating to each other and influencing each other. Thank you.